Hey guys, welcome back to another What's for Dinner on Keto. Sue's here. If you are new, welcome. Please consider subscribing and sticking around with us for weekly what to eat keto diet videos. Um, these are all recipes that a lot of them are comfort food. They will help you maintain ketosis, all low carb, keto friendly, yummy, yummy recipes. I wanna catch the way. So first off this week, cooked this wonderful roast with rutabaga, so delicious. So to start with, I took a rutabaga, a yellow onion, some celery, peeled that sucker up. Let me just tell you, I don't even have any knives hardly strong enough to cut rutabaga, but even though it's a fight, it's worth it. Just get it chopped down, kind of like you would have potatoes. And once you roast these up, they're just super, super delicious, guys. Next up, we're just going to keep on chopping away. We've got our celery working here, and then I'm just gonna chop up a whole, kinda on the smaller side, yellow onion. Again, onions do have carbs, so you wanna watch those. Now I'm just gonna layer them into my crock pot. I'm using an oval style roasting one. Put in my rutabaga first, then my onion and celery, and this is a top brown roast. Putting a liberal amount of Worcestershire, some garlic, I'm just gonna put that right on top and kind of rub it into the meat. Some sea salts, some ground black pepper, and a little bit of parsley. And again with this, you might wanna measure out your Worcestershire sauce because it does have carbs. I'm topping it with a couple tablespoons of butter. Mm, I love beef cooked in butter. And pouring probably about a fourth of a cup of chicken broth in there just to create some steam and help everything those rutabagas get nice and moist. Here it is all plated up. Looks just like a plate of a comfort food. It was so delicious. Next up this week, my favorite meal. This is a shrimp and sausage skillet. Super, super easy. Just took some thawed shrimp, covered them liberally with some Old Bay seasoning. This stuff is so delicious. I will link this recipe down below. Um, it only called for a half pound of shrimp. I added more because I love shrimp and it only called for six ounces of pre-cooked smoked sausage that I added a whole thing. So you just pour your shrimp in and into the avocado oil and cook them up and then transfer them to a separate dish. And then I emptied the liquid out of the pot, added a little bit more avocado oil and my husband did the meal prep, did the prep work on these veggies so they're in baggies for me but a three-fourth of a cup uh, each of red bell pepper and green bell pepper and a half of a medium yellow onion diced got those all cooked in there I took one zucchini and chopped it up and then a whole like ring pack of sausage which was like 12 or 14 ounces and went ahead and added that to my pot as well and cooked that on down until the zucchini started to get a little tender and you just want all of those flavors to marinate together Okay, once that was cooked down some, I added back my shrimp with just a tiny bit of the liquid I had reserved. I'm adding about a tablespoon of minced garlic, just a little more than the original recipe called for, and a fourth of a cup of chicken broth. Of course, some sea salt and some ground black pepper. And then I went ahead and plated it up and actually topped it with a little bit of um, red pepper flakes. I put a liberal amount of red pepper flakes in the recipe too. This was my favorite. Here's my husband's favorite, I think. Oh no, this wasn't his favorite. The last one's his favorite. This one is a broccoli sesame chicken. Started out with just a pound of chopped up raw chicken. I steamed a bag of uh, Kirkland's broccoli. Here are all my ingredients kind of assembled together for you to see for this recipe. Looks like a lot of ingredients. But I swear this one was so easy. So I took some arrowroot powder. You could use xanthan gum, I think, if you don't have arrowroot. And I added some uh, liquid coconut aminos to that. I went ahead and mixed it up, and then I just stuck that to the side. And some avocado oil in the pan. Again, this recipe is from Peace, Love, and Low Carb, and I will link it down below so you can get all the exact measurements. Added some garlic, swooshed it around, cooked it up until it was fragrant. Went ahead and added my diced chicken to the mix. Again, if you chop your meats while they're slightly 
frozen stock. They cut up way easier. Of course, I added my sea salt and my black pepper and just continue to sear and brown this right on up. Then I added in some sesame oil and the broccoli to the mix. Poured over it that arrowroot powder liquid aminos and just kept on incorporating it. And here it goes all plated up. Added some sesame seeds just to the individual plate and red pepper flakes. I didn't want to put it in the whole thing because I wanted my babies to be able to eat this without having spice. I actually bit into one of these pepper seeds and about choked on it. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. So next up was the favorite uh, kind of comfort food dish. Like I said, the shrimp was my favorite, but my husband liked the chicken broccoli, but we about fought each other over the leftovers of this. So this is a ham and cheese stromboli keto. Preheating my oven to 400 to get started. I just had some of this lunch ham meat in the fridge that I needed to use up. It's sharp cheddar cheese in a bowl. I'm going ahead and adding my mozzarella cheese. That's a, about one and a fourth cups. I'm gonna microwave that for a minute, and while that was working, I went ahead and started slicing up some sharp cheddar. The recipe, um, which is by Ruled MD, M E, Ruled Mad, I think is what I usually think they are. Correct me in the comments, please. <laughs> anyway, after the cheese is out for a minute, you know the drill probably with this. You heat it back up for another 10 seconds to 15 seconds, mix it up. Then I popped it back in, I think, for one more round here. And I was gonna say the measurements on this recipe for how much ham they want and how much cheddar they wanted are very small compared to what I actually put in, so you can really play this by ear. Here are my dry ingredients. I just took my four tablespoons almond flour, added with that the three tablespoons coconut flour and a teaspoon Italian seasoning, and just mix those all up before I add them to our dough cheese. <laughs> So I'm using a spoon to start with and just trying to get as much of those dry ingredients kind of pressed into the dough as possible. And then I'm gonna add a large egg, mix it with the spoon some more until it's, you know, incorporated pretty well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my hands in there and just knead that dough a little bit just to make it more pliable and easy to work with. Once I got it to the texture I wanted, I just went ahead and turned it out onto a piece of parchment and then covered it with another piece of parchment. And to start with, I just kind of mushed this out with my hands to kind of get it in the shape that I wanted before I grabbed my rolling pin and go ahead and start rolling it all the way out. Now guys, if you make this at home, I wouldn't roll it out as thin as I did because it gave me a little bit of problems later. Though as you'll see in the end, it all worked out perfectly. So really just do whatever you feel with that rolling pin. <laughs> After I have it rolled out to the sizes I want, go ahead and lift it up. This day was particularly sticky. I kind of scored an area with a fork so I could see what I was working with that I wanted to leave um, uncut. And then used a pizza cutter to cut diagonally up all the sides and the ends to that center line that I had scored. You can see here how thin that dough is. And that does give me a problem when I start putting this all together. Uh, what really didn't help is that I put so much ham and so much cheese in this that it was hard to stretch these little thin pieces of dough over it. But like I said, it all worked out and was so delicious. So you take from that what you will and do it how you want. I just kind of alternated the ham and cheese layers. I used up all this ham because that was the purpose of cooking this recipe. Now, here comes Struggle Bus USA. Okay, that one just, oh, well, this is gonna go well. Perfect, ooh, okay, not so well. Okay, let's try the other side. Oh, rip, okay. <laughs> so as you can see, this was a little bit of a struggle getting started, but I just kind of patched it all together, and when I cooked it, I really thought it was going to be a ham and cheese explosion in my oven, but it wasn't. It all came together great, so if you can just get it into a blob, it will maintain its structure while it's baking, from my experience.
And there you go. You can see I just kind of squeeze it together and carefully slid it onto a cookie sheet. And I put this in the oven for 20 minutes. And when it comes out, you can see that uh, although the parchment paper around it looks kind of messy, the actual strumpoli turned out beautifully. This was so good. I only try to cook one recipe a week that's this heavy, but here it goes. So there you go, guys. That's our what to eat this week on your keto diet for your meal plan. Make sure you come back next Sunday, please. And do me a favor, share this video with any of your friends that are doing keto or just beginning keto, starting out. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Growing a word, smiling as we're falling.